we have been experimenting with uh, uh, re highly realistic uh, environments, interactive environments, what we would call reality create. It, when the project came about, our colleagues in the wayfinding uh, community came to search for us and they said, uh, you know what, we have here a challenge that we have, uh, we can't test in the real world. So this was uh, immediately made me excited. Virtual reality has been around for a long time in, uh, in our industry, but it has never been, uh, 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 has never really caught up. So here we have a situation in which we can't uh, we can't rely on other on other experiences. This is one of the busiest station in the world. It's going to become twice as complex from uh, from uh, two lines and four platforms to four lines and eight platforms, seven levels underground, one million passengers per day currently handling. The passengers number is not going to change, but uh, what it is, uh, is going to change is the fact that from uh, most of the journeys being cross-platform, so people coming off the green train across the platform on the, on the red train, will now have uh, uh, eight, seven more options. And so this is where the current station handles the traffic with eight escalators. The new station will uh, add another 40 escalators to a total of 48. And some of these escalators will fly four levels at a time. Uh, this challenge uh, uh, is uh, unprecedented. This, uh, the, of course, the station is currently operational. We can't afford to close it, not even for an hour. Uh, so what we, what we need to do is we need to use uh, uh, reality creating in order to experience. At this, uh, in this station, uh, the part of the station is uh, um, existing and uh, we did not use uh, reality capture. Uh, we would have and should have used it, uh, but, but at the time it wasn't uh, it was a part of the scope. So I'm thrilled of the opportunity to go back and uh, now that reality capture has become such a fluid workflow. I'm looking forward to go back and add uh, uh, that portion to the design. And now, let me grab the joystick and take you on a tour. I grab uh, the joystick and I can navigate around. So visualization has been used uh, uh, throughout uh, uh, the industry in order to communicate design to the public. What we want to do here is to go a step further and to actually use the public in order to capture design feedback that we can then analyze and then use to improve the actual design of the station. So in order to do so we have created a, a task. The task is can you use the signage of the station to find the South Island Line. We're going to look at those uh, types of signs and when we arrive we're going to step on this flashing marker and we put uh, our, uh, you put our, your name in it so I'm going to type in Elvis and then I click start. Now if I do my journey so I'm going to go down this way and I see there South Island Line. So I'm going to follow the sign. The speed I'm walking is, uh, at is an accurate uh, speed, so the station is big, it's going to take a while. I see again South Island Line, I'm not lost. And I see here a lot of signage. As I approach, I can read South Island Line this way. I know very well the station, I've been working on it for years. You will see when it's in the hands of the public, you will actually w w capture a whole lot of unexpected behaviors. I'm going down this uh, uh, three levels escalators. This is about twice the size of the busiest station in America, which is Penn Station. Here again, South Island Line. I do it almost on automatic. I'm uh, my behavior is very unusual, is because I know my way very well. And, uh, and here I am at the end of the journey. So I completed the journey in 1 minute 29 seconds. 
Uh, the client said we would like a 21st century station and we, we discussed a bit and we came up with this idea that the 21st century station is a station where you can go from anywhere to anywhere in a, a, a very limited amount of time. So in other words, it's a station where the flows are really clear and effective. The, in this station with the, with the client, the, the time will be a minute and a half. So by navigating the stations thousands of times, I have achieved a minute and 29, which is pretty close. Uh, it turns out that when we give it to the public, we have all sorts of different uh, times. The average time is nearly twice as much as, uh, as uh, the design uh, uh, target time. So this uh, has uh, created quite a lot of interest in the people involved in the, pro in the project. Uh, and uh, w these are new techniques. So people, uh, everyone has to take this as a, with a pinch of salt. It needs to be calibrated. But what is uh, hinting to us is that we can actually uh, do uh, something that architects do, which is post-occupancy evaluation. But we can do it pre-construction. Post-occupancy evaluation is a great, uh, is a great uh, uh, technique, but it's a technique that is mostly used in academia. Whereas, uh, because once the building is built, it, it takes a lot of effort and resources to go and change it. By moving it pre-construction, all of a sudden it, it becomes, uh, uh, it, it gives you the feedback at the right time, where making a change, uh, it doesn't cost uh, the earth. So we are excited uh, about the future of this uh, uh, opportunity offered by highly realistic environments and, and uh, real people. For more about Real 2015, visit real2015.com. And to learn everything about the world of reality computing from Autodesk, visit recap.autodesk.com.